All right guys, today I'm gonna to try to make a lock picking microphone. In order to do that, I have a microphone cable. I have XLR inputs into my digital recorder. So I bought a, a XLR microphone cable. This is the end that will plug into the digital recorder and this is the end that usually plugs into a microphone. The problem here is that I'm trying to use these little piezoelectric crystals. We want a contact mic that I can take and attach to the side of a lock so you guys will be able to hear what's going on inside of there. I'm going to use this shielded cable, but I don't need that plug. So I'm simply going to cut them off here in a few minutes, and I'm going to solder them to these. Now, I'd like to tell you what I've come up with. Piezoelectric crystals are notorious for, ha for being very noisy, particularly in contact mics and hydrophones. So I'd like to create a balanced piezoelectric uh, microphone. The way that I do that is use two crystals and I'm going to connect them. I'll put the piezoelectric pieces. By the way, you can I got a whole bag of these. You can buy them on the internet. They're just a few bucks. So if I screw this up, I'll have plenty of more attempts. Take the white part and put it in the middle, kind of like an Oreo cookie. Now I'm gonna have to solder those two pieces together and I'm gonna have to have a lead coming out of there. So I'll overlay my drawing. It's probably more efficient to tell you how it's gonna be connected. Now if you look at the drawing, I've got the two piezoelectric crystals coming out of the left side of the piezoelectric crystals will be the positive cable. Coming out of the center, where the, the white part of the Oreo would be, will be the ground or the shielding that goes into my cable. And coming out of the right side of the piezoelectric crystal will be the negative. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to solder these together and see what we can come up with. Now, before we do that, though, I have to take a look at the cable. Now, if you take a look here, you'll notice that the terminals are numbered. We have number one located right there next to my thumbnail, and that's the ground, and that should be connected to the shielding of the shielded cable. Over here on the left, we have number two. That's the positive, so a lot of times that's a red wire. And on the bottom here, we have terminal number three. That's the negative, so that's usually a black cable. So let's double check that and make sure because I can guarantee you on microphone cables that is probably not the case. So we're going to have to make note of this. Okay, right away I can see that there's no familiar colors in here. Uh, pin number one, as I mentioned, is goes to the shielding and that's exactly what they've done there. So that's the shielding. Pin number two at the top left there is supposed to be positive, it's supposed to be a red, and when you follow it around, it's actually a blue one here. Not a problem, we'll just make note of it, and that's what we're gonna to connect to the positive. And of course, the third one, that's the negative, and for some reason they use green, and so we'll just make note of that as well. Green equals negative. So rather than try to salvage this, I really don't need this cable. I don't wanna desolder. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it, we'll strip it back, and then I'll solder it onto our Oreo cookie of piezoelectrics. And I'll be back and show you what I've come up with. All right, that's what the end result looks like. So it's about ready to be sealed up. All I'm gonna do is take a little bit of silicone sealant, try to do this, doesn't take much. Sandwich it right in the middle, again, like an Oreo. I'm gonna let this dry overnight. I'm gonna dip it in epoxy to seal everything put my shrink wrap up here to cover up all of my bare wires, and then we're gonna try this thing out on a lock. All right guys, it's been 24 hours. I went ahead and put epoxy on there, mostly to toughen it up a little bit, maybe waterproof it. I don't expect there's gonna be any water in the lock lab though. I took the shrink wrap, put it up there to kind of squeeze those wires out of the way, 
It's ugly, but this is our click detecting microphone for the Lock Lab that you guys have been asking for. Supposedly well balanced, and let's find out. Let's do a couple of tests. Let's go ahead and move over to the digital recorder. I've already got everything kind of set up here. And what I'm going to do is take the microphone XLR input and input it. Let me make sure we the microphone for two is on, but I've got the gain turned completely off, which is what I think is a smart move. Okay, let's talk about what we should see here. While I'm recording, you'll notice at the very top, like right here, is my voice coming in through my Neumann microphone. Number two will be directly below it, but I've got the gain turned down to zero right now. So I'm going to slowly turn it up and while I take this pick and tap it. See, I'm already getting a, just, when the gain all the way down, I'm still getting something. Very slight there. Let's turn it up a little bit. And now it's really starting to come up there. Let's turn it up a little more. Okay, that is definitely working. Let's bump it up just a hair more. All right, now it's we're getting some pretty serious, just from some slight touches and taps with a pick. Let me turn that all the way back down since it's unpredictable. I really don't know what it's going to do when I set it down. All right, let's continue with testing. Let's, let's go ahead and uh, hook it up to a lock, and I will pick it, and we'll see what kind of feedback we're able to hear through this thing. Okay, I've thought a lot about how to attach this to the lock that we're going to be picking. I think the best way to do it is to use modeling clay. This is actually museum clay, so it's kind of sticky. So I'm just going to set them on the side there, take the modeling clay, and just kind of mold it around the lock. And I believe that that will isolate the piezoelectric crystal and reduce the noise while also keeping it in nice firm contact with the edge of the lock. All right, let me, um, let me turn this a little more. All right, I'm gonna turn the gain up on the piezoelectric, the, the click phone, to, I'm gonna put it on 20, which is still fairly low, and I'm going to take a, I'm just gonna take a rake. This is a proof of concept. I'm gonna be quiet, and I'm gonna just rake it inside of there. Okay, that should be pretty good. I'm going to turn the gain up even more. I'm going to turn it to, from 30, I'm going to turn it to 40. And just while it's sitting here, I'm getting, I can detect some noise uh, on the readout. So there's something coming across on the line before I even touch it. So even when I'm silent, I can see something reading. Oh, let's try it. And the last test, I'm going to turn the gain up to 50, I'm sorry, 60, and try it one more time. I'm getting what appears to be a lot of noise on the read, digital readout. All right, let me turn the number two mic back off. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna listen to this, and we're gonna come back and see if we can't draw some conclusions, see how well we did on this experiment. Well, that did not work out at all the way I had hoped. I, I really thought this was gonna be, pick up some pretty clear uh, sound from the inside of the lock, but it just didn't. The sound coming from my normal microphone was about 10 times better than what was coming from this piezoelectric because there was just so much noise, especially when we turned it up, turned the gain up so that we could actually amplify what I thought was gonna be the internal noises. Just didn't quite work out, I'm sorry to say. So for now, this is a no-go. I'm gonna keep experimenting. Maybe I can buy some larger piezoelectric crystals. It'll be more sensitive, but until then, we're gonna have to make do with the voice microphone sound. Sorry guys, it was worth a try though. Anyway, stay safe. Stay legal. 
Hold on, before you leave, click that subscribe button. And while you're there, click that notification bell as well. If you'd like to be a sponsor, click there, and for five bucks a month, you get all kinds of benefits. If that's not enough free stuff, hit the Lock Lab. We've got a self-paced lockpicking course with over a dozen modules at the bottom of the page. Join the tribe. Subscribe.